So why do managers care so much about stock price? Because if you think about it, the only time the company actually records the stock price of the company is when you have that initial public offering. After that, those numbers will sit on the book forever and are virtually unchanged, except for a couple of little exceptions we'll see in a little bit. So why do managers care? And when I'm talking about managers, I'm talking about the CEO, the CFO, not the local manager of Arby's. And the reason is because of that thing we talked about really early on about that mutual agency. And that is that the shareholders can fire the managers. And the shareholders, they care about the stock price because that's what they can get when they buy or sell this, their stock. So the shareholders care and they can fire the managers. So therefore the managers care. And often the CEOs, often the managers own stock too or get paid based on the stock price. So just like baseball players will get paid based on if they make the all-star team and stuff, a lot of time managers will get paid based on the stock price. So either they own the stock, so they're also interested, or the stock price goes up, they get a raise. That's the reason people care about the stock price. Again, from an accounting standpoint, it's important that you remember that the company itself does not kind of uh, make journal entries for the changes in the stock price. So you have on your books what you made at that initial public offering, and that's what stays as common stock. If you don't do anything else to your equity, if the stock, you know, if you sell the stock initially at $3, and in, you always hear about these people at Amazon, they bought it when it first came out at $3, now it's at $3,000. The company doesn't recognize that extra $3,000 at all that stays on their books at the amount of the initial public offering. But that's why managers care because the shareholders care and the shareholders can fire them. That has something to do with kind of these next uh, issues that we're gonna talk about. So the first one is a stock split. And the question is, what is a stock split? Uh, a stock split is where you split the stock. If the shareholder has, I'm gonna go to here and put it here. If the shareholder owns one stock, one share, after for a one to two stock split, then they now own two shares. So you turn in your one share of stock and they send you two. I won't get one free. Uh, so it's uh, that's all we mean by a stock split. If I do that, let's say I have 100,000 shares outstanding uh, before, then afterwards you have 200,000 shares. So what does that mean? So that's what it is, so the why. So what that means is, as anything, if I have supply and demand in a two for, I'm gonna put in a two, in a one for two stock split, you end up diluting the shares because now there's two, there's twice as many out. Here again, we kind of were nice and everybody who had 10% still has 10% because if you got one, now you got two. So instead of uh, one-tenth, you got two over two. So you got the same percentage, but that reduces the stock price. So the reason you do this is to manage your stock price. Now here, you're not gonna make any money or lose any money because in general, the stock price will go down almost exactly in half. Not exactly, exactly but pretty close to exactly in half. So why do we wanna manage our stock price? Well, some companies just have a target range they want their company to be in. Walmart, a lot of their employees buy stock with every paycheck. So they don't want their stock price to be seven or $800. So if it starts getting up too high, they'll split it. If you don't split the stock, that stock price keeps growing and growing and growing. For example, Amazon, 
they are sitting there around three thousand dollars for a stock price google and they don't do dividends and any splits they're sitting around two thousand google if you ever they change their name to alphabet berkshire hathaway you might hear of rupert murdoch if you haven't heard that name before it's one you probably should know as a business major he's up there with elon musk and bill gates rupert and bezos are kind of fight for one of the top billionaires every year he owns a company called berkshire hathaway they've never split and they've been around for a while if you want to buy a share of their stock at three hundred sixty-four thousand dollars, and clearly rupert wants early investors to stay invested and he doesn't really want new people if you really want to buy it they call this the a class they do have a b class that's only at like 242. so that's the way to manage the stock price a, a one two two means we're going to split it if you have one you get two you can do the opposite there can be two and you get one that means you turn in your two shares and you'll get one share what's that going to do to the price that makes the price go up there is a point if you get down into your shares are worth a dollar 35 cents nobody really likes those they are not very attractive to buyers just some examples visa had a one to four stock splits it's a one to four they wanted the price to come down and the price was 250 they thought that was just getting too high to attract the investors they wanted it doesn't go exactly down by the one to four but when it split it went down to 67 but it's pretty darn close office depot did the opposite they did the reverse stock split at 10 for one the price was two dollars and fifty cents and the price went up to 23 and not totally 10 times the journal entry is nothing there is no journal entry because all you're doing is a swap you're not selling anything you're not doing any cash you're just swapping them out so we would just make a note on the new authorized because usually you have to authorize it when you're given two or four to one outstanding an issue this is so common that if you go back and look at the stock price for years before the stock split unless you ask specifically they'll go ahead and restate everything for the 10 to 1 or the 1 to 4 ratio if you would do a historical view of visa the stock price will never show as being at 250 it will always be shown at one quarter of what it was before the stock split another thing we could do is just retire stock and in retiring stock is just that we buy it back and retire it never issue it again why would you do that to manage your stock price if there's fewer shares outstanding the price will go up the other thing we can do is treasury stock, which is the same idea. We're going to go to the market and we're going to buy back our stock. But what changes is we may issue it again or we may sell it again. So with the retirement, you pull them in, you're never going to issue them again. With treasury stock, we, we go to the market, we buy back 100,000 shares. Why are we doing that? doing it just to manage our stock price you see somebody buying it back that price is going to go up because there's going to be fewer shares but if you see they've got a whole lot of treasury stock sitting on their balance sheet that means well at any point they can issue it again and when they sell it what's going to happen that's going to drop the stock price so just to kind of show how things fit together we have authorized shares we only issue a hundred thousand and so that's what we have outstanding. We retire 20,000 shares. So when we retire, that takes that to 80. Our issued also goes down. And since we were authorized for 500 and we retire 20, now I'm only authorized to do another 480. That 20,000, when you retire it, it's gone for good. 
That's why we might do treasury shares. Let's say we buy 8,000 treasury shares and to be treasury stock, that means it's your own stock. So if I'm Google, I'm buying Google stock. Authorized stays the same. My issued stays the same, but it's the outstanding that's different because now I own 8,000 shares. So now only 72,000 are out there on the market. But that's where the treasury shares come in. So this is 8,000. Then I sell some of those treasury shares. Still that, I'm sitting there at 480 authorized. I still issue 80, but now that I sell those treasury shares, now there's 74,000 outstanding because I just put another 2,000 back out on the market. You can do the subtraction. Now you see that there's 6,000 treasury shares. We sell another thousand. So now we have seven, 5,000. So there must be 5,000 treasury shares. But the most important things about stock, there is no such thing as dividend expense. And I will put in 100,000 ways for you to jump at there's dividend expense. Dividends reduces equity. Also, even on this treasury stock, when you go back and look, you never book a gain or a loss on your own treasury stock. A gain or loss will go on an income statement. So we adjust a, a paid in capital account. So that goes to this one. So therefore, dividends or profit and losses from your treasury or your re retiring, either way, they do not go on the income statement. Don't do it. Any of those things go into the equity account. So again, if it's dividends, the equity account is dividends. If it's gain or losses from these other things, it's one of those paid in capital accounts. So it just moves around equity. Don't ever put them on the income statement.